So I want to talk a little bit about the Demise and Rise documentary uh -huh. because it just turned 10 sure. years old. It was crazy. So you've been sober for 11 years Correct. now, right? Uh, mm -hmm. well, first, congratulations on Thank that. Thank you. It's incredible. Uh, so we saw that uh, Knoxville and a bunch of other people came to your apartment and just pushed you into rehab, basically. Well, right. They, uh, it was entirely organized by Knoxville. He showed up with, I believe, seven extra people. And it was not the type of intervention where they ask you if you're willing to accept help. They yeah. showed up to simply inform me that I was going to get help. <laughs> and, you know, by enacting California's 5150 law, they uh, were able to commit me to a psychiatric ward involuntarily. And uh, they were willing to beat me up, overpower me, and force me there. But yeah. I've never been a fighter, so they were <laughs> able to just get me in the car. Yeah. So we saw that part of them pushing you into it. But I want to know, when was the first moment where internally you kind of made that first step? Um, the involuntary hold that they uh, were legally entitled you know, to impose on me was for three days. Mm -hmm. It's called 5150 and it's a 72 hour uh, hold. Yeah. But when I got to the hospital, I was spitting on people. I was just generally like so uh, unlovely that they changed my status to 5250, which is a two week hold. So they had me uh, for two weeks. And um, it took about seven days for uh, you know certain things to happen. You know, some people came in and talked about recovery and and uh, I read some stuff and I just like it was time. You know, yeah. my life was a disaster, and uh, I decided about seven days in that uh, that I, I not only wanted to go into treatment, but that I didn't want to waste my time in treatment. That uh, right. that I want if I was going to make the commitment to get sober, I wanted to give myself every advantage and really uh, do the things that people do to stay sober. And thankfully, I've been committed to that ever since. So. Absolutely. So on that 11-year journey of sobriety, I know you've credited with uh, your rescue dogs helping you a little bit. Uh, I'm sure your fiance helps you all the time. Uh, what was a moment, if there was one, where you felt like you were about to fall off the wagon? Uh, I remember when we were shooting Jackass 3D, there was a point when we were doing pickup shots, and uh, I, I, it wasn't anything really in particular that was uh, should have been stressful, but uh, I was very stressed out. Mm. I remember th th like feeling like ah, you know, but um, <clears throat> I don't know how close I really was to to getting loaded. Um, yeah, there's not really a, a, a particular moment that jumps out, but uh, certainly I've had plenty of you know periods of discomfort, sure. you know, and uh, it's always pretty scary. But um, you know, you just gotta stay plugged in and do the do the deal. Gotcha. That's what like very few people stay sober for yes. long term. Um, it's actually uh, like five percent of alcoholics, and the other ninety five percent. They say die drunk of causes related directly to alcoholism yeah. or respectively drug abuse. So you think, okay, there's only a 5% chance that you're going to make it. But then it's like, oh, but those 5% like stay together and keep each other safe. Yeah. Like in the wildlife, you know, like the pack. Predators don't generally mess with the pack. They want the, the one that wanders off that's weak, that's, you know, injured. Yeah. So by staying in the pack, you kind of, gotcha. and that's really what sober people do is they yeah. mob up. So if anyone out there is struggling, uh, maybe something uh, that could help is, you know, maybe some tips on what you, maybe you do to help you maintain like a positive state of mind. Well, the thing about recovery without getting too uh, <clears throat> specific is that it's really not uh, a self-help uh, <clears throat> dynamic what it is is a dynamic of helping others mm. again the uh, you know disease of alcoholism and addiction is about selfishness and self-centeredness and so like the the treatment of it the you know it's helping others yeah and um, so yeah that's what what we do we we uh, we yearn to find people to help 
you know, find their way in, in uh, sobriety. So anybody who's, who's struggling, us sober people love it when you reach out for help. Yeah. You know, like, uh, and you join the pack, you know, find someone who's, who's already sober and, and uh, you know, let us show you the way, you know, like get mob up with us and come down our path and that's how it works. Thank you.